good stuff. What's up guys? Andy Fogarty here from theathomewelder.com and I'm here for kingmetals.com and today we're going to go over the pros and cons of Tig Milder, Tig Milders, Tig Milders, Milder, Mildred, Mil that's the name of my grandmother, Mildred. Tig welders versus stick welders versus MIG welders. The pros and cons of each one and which one is probably right for you. Let's get into it. Now let's start things off with stick welders. Now stick welding is like probably one of the oldest, simplest ways to uh, get into welding. It's it's very cost efficient and it's it's very it's a very portable system usually. And and because of this, it's why it's very popular with beginner welders or hobbyist welders because you can you have access to this stuff just about anywhere and the machines are generally fairly inexpensive. Now, the benefits of stick welding is like I mentioned before, it's it's fairly inexpensive to get into and the machines are pretty versatile. Now, they can be used outdoors, indoors, and they can be used on a lot of different types of material. Iron, steel, aluminum, nickel, copper alloys. If you live in rural areas and you have a lot of large equipment, so things like trailers and bobcats, just things that would you know break or you would need to have a quick repair on, Stick welding is a great way to do that. With stick welding, you don't have to have everything super duper clean like you would other processes. You can, you don't really have to worry so much about dirt and rust and, and all those other things. I mean, you, you want your material to be as clean as possible, obviously, for a better weld, but stick welding can kind of blast through all that stuff when you need it to. Now that also kind of alludes into the downside of stick, and that is that it's super messy. You're always gonna have some sort of cleanup where you're gonna be having to sand down your weld, grind them down a little bit, and they're never just gonna have that, that pretty weld look. Now obviously people you know, who have spent their whole lives mastering the art, their welds are gonna look great, no offense to you guys, but the average Joe who's just got this thing around their house fixing stuff, we're gonna be blasting stuff just trying to melt that metal. Now there's a reason why TIG welding is kind of looked at as sort of the, the holy grail, the higher echelon of welding, and that's just because it's so precise, it's so clean, you have so much control over the weld and just every aspect of the project that you're working on. Now TIG welding is super, super clean, and because it's super clean, that means you also have to keep your area around you. All the material, everything has to be spotless. You need to be, it, you need to think of it as a kitchen, as super clean. You can't have any rust or oils or anything on the material that you're working with, or you're not gonna have a great weld with TIG. Now, TIG welds are generally stronger, they're just a higher quality, they're gonna last longer, and they're just, you know, as we mentioned before, super, super clean. Once you're finished welding, you it's almost like you have a finished product and you're ready to go. Now, kind of a downside to TIG is it, there's a lot more involved. It's a lot harder to learn, and it's definitely not really a place where I recommend people start if they don't know anything about welding at all. Now, MIG welding is sort of the, uh, what I consider the perfect middle ground between stick welding and TIG welding. You have a lot more control over everything than you do with stick, and you don't have quite the headache of worrying about all the different things involved with TIG welding. Now MIG is commonly referred to as the point and shoot method and that's because you just, you have a spool of wire that runs through a hose that comes out to a gun, you pull the trigger, you hit something, and you're welding. Now of course there's more to it than that, but it's, it's very, very simple in how it works. You don't have to worry about holding a rod and moving it, you're, you're just controlling a gun and learning how to navigate that weld pool that's forming from the wire coming out. Uh, you do have to keep your material clean and your workspace fairly clean. Nowhere near as clean as you do with TIG. You don't have to really have everything like a sterile environment, uh, but it does have to be cleaner than stick. Another great thing about MIG, like stick machines, is you can pretty much find them anywhere. Uh, any, most hardware stores have them, Home Depots, Lowe's, they all have both stick and MIG units. Um, you know, you can't really go pick up a TIG unit down at your local hardware store. Well, I don't know where you live, but you can't do that where I live. Alright, I'm Andy Fogarty for the theathomewelder.com. You want to learn the basics of MIG welding? Come on over, sign up, totally free, and we'll send you weekly tips and tricks on how to get better at welding, how to make money at welding, just all sorts of stuff you need to know, just as a DIY welder. All right, that's it. I'll see you guys next time.